Hello folks, this is Nitin welcoming you to the AI University channel where you can learn all your favorite digital technologies like machine learning, deep learning, AI, big data, Hadoop, virtual reality and cloud computing. In this video, I'm going to talk about the remaining best practices to write a production level code in data science world. This is the second video of the two video series and I'm sure you will find this uh, video useful as well in your data science journey. So I stay connected till the end of this video and this series to acquire the complete knowledge. If you are new here, then consider uh, subscribing to this channel or if you have already subscribed, then click on the bell icon to receive the notifications about hottest technologies of 21st century. So the fourth and the next uh, best practice for writing production level code in data science is performing proper unit testing of your code before you move that code into the next stage of system testing. In data science also, we can write, you know, the set of test cases, which we as a data scientist think that those uh, test cases should always be executed. Okay, so companies create a separate environment uh, before they move any code to the production. These environments are development where developers write the code and performs unit testing. Then there is a testing environment where testers perform system testing, regression testing, integration testing, as well as uh, performance testing. Then they have a pre-production or staging environment, which actually mimics uh, the production environment and where we finally perform our final testing before uh, moving uh, the code to the final environment called production environment where the actual application runs in the real life and uh, there should not be any issues in the code which runs here in production because if there are issues in the production code then it may have some financial impacts on the company hence as a part of a unit testing uh, it's our duty uh, as a data scientist that we need to write some automated scripts or in fact somebody from development team can write some automated scripts on our behalf to test the code step by step in order to minimize error related to uh, you know some boundary conditions variable initializations etc because there can be uh, you know human errors if we test the code manually but at least as a data scientist, we should know how to run the test cases uh, related to our uh, model or, you know, some pre-processing steps. So if there are any issues or errors uh, which are encountered, then a developer can uh, debug or data scientist uh, can debug and uh, fix the code post which we again need to perform some unit testing to make sure that code is bug free now. There is a module or package in Python called unit test, which you can use in order to write and run unit test cases in an automated fashion, hence saving a lot of time and manual errors. So the next best practice in the list is readability. It's always a good habit if your code accompany, uh, you know, some kind of ex explanation on what that line of code or function or code snippet is doing so that it's easy for other uh, fellow developers or data scientists or any other uh, data scientist uh, uh, in the team to understand your code. So let's go one by one. Uh, what are the uh, uh, several ways we can make our code neat and readable? So the number one is comments. You can include uh, comments to describe what a particular line or section of the code is uh, representing. Let me open my uh, Jupyter Notebook real quick to show you what exactly I'm talking about. So if you see here, I have included the comment above the code snippet shown here. As you can see, this is the comment. Okay. And it says invoke the division function and multiply the result with nine. So this way you can explain the complex. This is pretty much straightforward and simple, but if there is some complex logic involved, then you can you know explain that complex logic uh, using these comments uh, uh, pertaining any particular code snippet the second way uh, you know of making our code readable is by making use of doc strings 
so doc string is a convenient way of uh, describing the objective of a particular python function module class or method that is documenting and explaining what a particular segment of function module method or class is doing it always uh, you know begins with capital letter and first line should always have a short description so as you can see here this is a division function here okay and this particular text string is nothing but doc string okay and it clearly uh, tells you or explain what this function is all about so in a way it is like a, a, a comment but uh, this is specifically for functions methods uh, classes so and so forth so this this uh, doc string is always uh, starts with uh, you know a capital letter okay and is enclosed within uh, inverted commas three inverted commas okay three here and three here so pair of three uh, inverted commas so it should always be begin with capital letter and the first line should always give a short description i have kept only one line here but if you have multiple line then first line should always begin uh, sorry first line should always uh, give you a short description so this is the doc string related to this division function so the third way of writing our code neat and readable is giving our functions and variables an appropriate name such that it should be self explanatory if someone reads your code and uh, then he or she she should be able to figure out what task a particular variable or function is expected to do example if you see this uh, division function here you can pretty much uh, make out that this function is going to perform division of two numbers because the name itself suggests that it's a division function and there are two arguments here so that means it is going to perform the division of uh, division based on two parameters provided here okay so it's kind of a self explanatory this function is self explanatory here had i kept its name as uh, my function so instead of division if i kept the name as let us say my function right then you wouldn't be able to figure out what this function is intended for right so let me change it back to division so this is the way we can provide a a uh, very meaningful name to our functions and variables now try not to exceed 30 characters for naming a variable and 60 characters for naming a function you can uh, type a variable name as you know something like average underscore height underscore man so this average height and man um, uh, definitely can tell you that you are trying to find out the average height of man so basically it clearly defines what, what uh, that, that particular variable holds or what value that particular variable is going to hold. So here uh, you can see in my example that uh, I have kept the name of the variable here as division result, right? Which actually holds the result of a division, right? And it is also pretty much self-explanatory, meaning it clearly tells one can definitely uh, make out that okay this particular variable holds the division result right so the next best practice in the list is version control if you are working on a project which follows uh, agile methodology then you might already be aware of it so version control is kind of a database which allows you to take a snapshot of your entire project at any given time so if you have made some code changes uh, yesterday uh, then its version uh, then the version control system will capture that snapshot of the code now if you again come back today and either modified few lines of codes or uh, you know adds new line of add new line of codes then uh, in the same program from yesterday's committed code then your version control system will capture today's a snapshot as well and then it can tell you what are the differences in the code version from yesterday and today if we want to find that out so in a nutshell version control tracks the changes made to the program or source code there are several uh, version control systems available in the market these days and some of the popular ones are github beanstalk gitlab aws code commit bitbucket etc moving on so every time we make a code change 
we commit the changes instead of saving a file with different name or version number. We can easily revert back to the old source code whenever we want to using one version control system. But such is not the case if uh, you know we are manually updating the version number or name of uh, name uh, for new code changes or new source file after making those changes. So it's always suggested to learn the complete life cycle. Uh, in fact, it's always suggested for a data scientist to learn the complete life cycle of version control system like Git. Uh, it definitely gives an edge to you know budding data scientist if he she already uh, knows about you know version control system. So these were the three remaining uh, best practices discussed in this video. Uh, please post your comments in the comment section given below and let me know if you liked this series so that I can you know create the similar kind of uh, uh, series in the upcoming future. If you are watching this video and you are not already a subscriber to our channel then consider clicking that little subscribe button. In case you have already subscribed then click on the bell icon to receive the notifications whenever I will release a new video. So thanks for hanging out with me guys. I will be covering next topic in the upcoming video. So keep on watching. Thank you.